t picks and bans I'm not going to talk about, guys. I'm going to try to avoid anything like that where it's like it's going to reveal too much or um, be detrimental, obviously, in like phase three. I'm not going to talk about. But I can talk about like a, a few things when it comes to like picks and bans. It's so this tournament, there was a lot of like. Maybe a lot of you guys don't know this, but when you lose a game, you get to choose which side you are. You get to choose whether you're first pick or second pick. So basically to break that down, it's just like, you know, it's just like playing basketball at the park. Like whoever gets first pick, they get to pick one character. And then the next the next person, second pick gets two characters, which is actually really important in picks and bans. Um, so obviously there was like a lot of uh, contested picks this this tournament in the SPL because there are characters like Eset, Lancelot is broken. There's a few really good junglers. Um, a few really good supports still, like Yamoja, like Kepri, shit like that, right? So throughout this entire tournament, whoever had, like, first pick, maybe didn't have, like, a, a clear advantage, but it was definitely something that teams were, like, um, like worried about uh, getting. So a lot of times, like, there'll be, like, one draft, a team will, like, first pick a character, and then the next draft, they won't even, like, value it until, like, third or fourth pick. And that's just because, you know, the... The positions have changed in the draft and um also like throughout a set you know teams just like figure out what they value more figure out what they value less and stuff like that so but yeah obviously i can't be too specific <laughs> just wanted to give you guys a breakdown so this game i got Kakolin. i can tell you guys my thought process behind things i'm not going to say anything about like my teammates why they pick their characters or why they do whatever the reason I pick uh, Kukulin is, one, he's a budget King Arthur. King Arthur's really good right now. He's really good with Glad Shield, very good with Bluestone. He can just one-shot people late game, has no bad lanes, and can stalemate every single lane in the in the game and get totems, which is basically what you want to do right now as a soul laner. Um, so they banned King Arthur. You guys can see down here, they banned King Arthur. So that wasn't an option on the table. And uh, so I was like, all right, we'll just go budget. We'll just go budget King Arthur this game for the reasons I just said, and... Yeah, we got a King Arthur game. It's also good into Lancelot because you want to pick characters that can uh, stalemate against Lancelot, uh, or at least bully him a bit. Um, because if you can kind of, if you just let him kind of roam free, free farm, and then he just out rotates you and just does more than you because his kit's kind of bloated and broken, it's not good. So you kind of want to keep him down, keep him, uh, keep him down in lane. So go a bully character. That's what you can do. Something also to keep in mind is that. Uh, Lancelot's kind of like Achilles or Kukulin or Arthur, where like his level two is really strong because he basically has three abilities. So if you're going to fight at a totem at level two, totem's pretty important right now in Smite. If you want to fight at level two, you're going to be you need to be a character that's equally strong in those scenarios. So Cuckoo is obviously pretty strong because he can transform and is really really strong. Also, you guys notice I spawn out of base a lot of the time in SPL. I'm the only one on my team that ever does. I don't I don't know why. Sometimes I'm literally out of the fountain when we get into the game, but. So yeah, we're at one point time, one point five times speed. Go bluestone, just a bunch of pots on Kukulin. You don't need to go a tier one item, just go chalice and a bunch of pots so that you can just kind of chill in the laning phase for a while until you get your first item, which most of the time is going to be sovereignty. Skin choice, yeah, I always use this uh, the skin because I don't have it on the main client. This is where on the SPL servers and you have every skin, so I just uh, I just like this one because I don't have it. So this is our very first game of the set in the semifinals as well. So usually your first game against a team, especially in a tournament setting when you don't know exactly how they're going to be playing when, when they come into a tournament, you kind of get a feel for the team and see what they're trying to do. So you kind of want to pick some default characters and uh, maybe stick to your own game plan versus like actually countering them. But as the set develops and as you play a team over multiple games, you can kind of decide whether you want to uh, ban them out more. So right there, I was just trying to hit him plus the wave. You kind of want to hit the enemy a little bit as Kukulin early game so you can stack up the uh, your rage because the minions will actually hit you. So he hits two here and he outclears me. Lancelot's pretty good at uh, outclearing you most of the time. I didn't play that that great to be fair, but we just fight over Totem, run into Way. They have a pretty good level two, lots of chase down potential. And uh, I had lost kind of like the, the first wave pressure, which I probably shouldn't have, but... It's close. It can be close. And there's like little things like Lancelot has blue stun plus tier one soul eater. So he has a little bit more power than me for clearing and everything. But throughout this whole landing phase, I basically just want to use my three to avoid uh, like, you know, the, the important abilities. 
So it could be to avoid his horse one. It could be to avoid his knockup. Um, you know, stuff like that. Like that. See, he's going to want to one the wave. So I stand in the wave because he wants to use it on me plus the wave. And then we just jump over his, his one so that we can get pressure on the wave. If he hits me with that, he gains a lot of uh, leeway in the lane. So at this point in the game, it's the first blue respawn and the second totem. A lot of times, if you're winning your lane, it's a really big uh, advantage because you can get that second totem plus have the opportunity to maybe go for their blue buff. But since the lane is basically just perfectly even and their uh, their early game is pretty much just as strong as ours as Nam lanes a lot, they have a lot of kill potential, we decide to do the totem, take our win, and just go do our own blue. See, just keep jumping the, the horse one, if that's the ability he wants to use on me. Just using my jump for something. But keep in mind, don't use your jump to just jump to a random spot. You need to make sure you're hitting minions with it so you don't lose your rage, because he wants to, you want to constantly transform in the laning phase. That's why you don't have a point in your two. So now we're level five. We are now out of pots, but we're also pretty close to our sovereignty, so we shouldn't have to worry too much. Still getting lane pressure, because he doesn't want to fight into the, uh, the transformation. It's fine to just clear the minion waves and then start using your 1 and 3 on him. You don't have to hit 3 enemies with it, it's just preferred. Yeah, and then through the laning phase you also want to use your vision shard basically at their sharpie, because that's the most common spot you're going to be ganked. And it's just going to give you the most amount of time to like prepare for the gank. Um, so yeah, because basically everywhere else you get ganked you can basically just survive, so... He doesn't want to stop my back because he's just going to stop back or uh, back and TP in with his soul eater as well. So there's no point for us to hit each other there. We know we just want to back. Um, so now I have my sovereignty and he has his soul eater. This is a really important part of the game because you're much stronger uh, as a, so a sovereignty warrior versus a soul eater assassin. They have to get that, that soul eater stacked before they're actually feeling pretty good and strong. Um, so you kind of want to abuse that if you can. If you fight around your lane and all that, it's, it's good. Um, but just realize that you will outtrade them if you uh, fight them with Sovereignty before they have their Soul Eater. Mike comes over so we can get pressure. And if you look at the timer, you'll notice this a lot in SPL games. The Scorpions spawn at 5 minutes, so it's really important to be on the map and be strong so that you can contest these Scorpions because they're like mini Gold Furies. If you get both of them and do a Morbius Sweep, as, Mos as Moswell says, it can give you a, a nice lead in the early game. It also upgrades your buffs when you do your Scorpion, which is really strong, 20% CDR. So I'm pretty sure this is the first team fight of the game. So we'll just go ahead and do one times. Mike uses his mural to secure Scorpion, which is really good for us. But because of that, they're trying to chase him out. I get a nice three-man knockup into a huge wall for Mike. If the E settle was actually a little bit further up, this fight would have been a lot cleaner. But I'm just calling, I'm just calling to kill Cherno here because he's the most important target left in this fight, and putting him behind as a mid laner is really good. And he was just in front of me, so it's gonna be pretty easy to kill. But um, so yeah, that ended up being pretty good for us. I'm pretty sure we got the Scorpion, kill two, and uh, I think we got first blood as well. Yeah, we definitely got first blood. We got a kill, they got a kill, and then we got a kill after that, so. Oh, did they actually get the Scorp? Mm, okay. Well, good to look for either way. Unfortunately, they ended up getting the Scorp, but... Why does this feel slow? Dude, now that it's at one times, it feels slower. But anyway... But that was still obviously very good for us because we went and did our own Scorp anyway. So worst case scenario, we're just trading even. But because we got first blood, killed the mid laner, and uh, all that jazz ended up being good. Like I said, I am so much stronger than the Lancelot there because I have a full Sov. I am unkillable at this point, especially because they have a physical mid laner. They literally have three physicals on this side of the map and a Fafnir because their only magical is a Poseidon ADC. So I want to abuse that. I want to abuse the fact that I have Sov and he has Soul Eater in. You know, if, if you just fight when you have Sov and you win a big fight, that could be the game. You could literally win the game off of that. So that's one way to uh, abuse a character like this. What's up, Death? There, I was just trying to dash the way to make sure I can get my, my root on it, but I it ran out. See, just jumping his ones. That's all I gotta do. Whenever they're, you're playing a pressure character... I'll pause real quick. Whenever you're playing a pressure character and they're playing a, like a greedy character and they run past you to clear the wave, you need to run back to them and start hitting them. Because you're going to win the trades against them. You don't want them to just clear for free. So go over there and hit them. I even use my ult to get pressure on him and get rage. Because now I can poke him out. Look how much I poke him out and his TP's down. It's down for another 30 seconds at the same time as mine. So he has to back. We push the wave under his tower. And that's a, another small win on the map. I'll get totem as well if I, if I need to. 
I don't actually get totem. I just take this back, use my time to get back and be strong on the map with tier two glads. So small wins. Anti heal works against everything, but um, uh, it would the upgraded onk wouldn't proc off the HP five or anything only with the hoodie. You can also go mail or renew on Kukulin for for sustain. Um, but right now, Sob into Glads is just way too strong for physical. So right here, we have good wards to call the rotations. I'm just talking to my team, communicating, pinging, pinging exactly where he's coming from. And my team backs up. They don't get anything off of it. And just uh, staying, staying uh, aware on the map. We do have our TP up as well. So worst case scenario, I could TP to a fight. And I can tell my team that. Hey, my TP is up. If you guys fight towards the mid tower, I can just I can just TP there if I need to. Just farming, doing blues on cooldowns, making sure that uh, Scream gets credit for it as well. Good farm to have on the map. At this point, since they have so much, uh, they have like a physical dominant like slow lane side of the slow lane side of the map, and I have Sav plus tier two Glads. I'm basically ungankable, so I'm not really I don't even really need to ward or care too much about uh, their nemesis. So I'm not like you see like I'll be dashing waves, I'll be jumping waves, like right here. I don't even really see them on the map, but it would just be a waste of time for them to gank me, to be honest. So that's his TP. My TP's still up. He probably has his glads, so we're probably just both going to be having uh, glads on the map here. I do back camp, so notice where Sprack is on the map, where Scream is. He's on the left side of the map looking to do something over there. So because of that, Daniel and I get these backs on cooldown, just trying to be efficient. Um, and if, you know, if your jungler's not on that side of the map, then it's good to get those on cooldown. Just really efficient for overall farm. Call out to my team that Lancelot's going to be rotating here. I'm just going to TP back in. They can get this pyro. Worst case scenario, they'll just all in this and get it, which they do. But that's fine. We just want to be strong in the map. They get a they get a pyro for free. They have like a really good PvE comp, if you can tell. Fafnir with like basically three auto attack characters. Uh, Poseidon's really good at doing objectives, shredding them, and securing them because of his Kraken and his Trident. Um, so because of that, like, it, it was... It was uh, bound to happen that they would get some objectives here and there. Like, we just can't keep up with them a little bit when it comes to PvE. So what we're trying to do is just uh, win the fights or use our ESAT ults to confirm, like, bigger objectives or important ones. So right here, I'm just rotating over because we were uh, going to maybe go to gold here. I don't really care about these guys hitting me. I have a full glads and a full sov. I'm just kind of jerking them off a little bit. That's what we like to call it. Keep them occupied, basically. Teams hovering around gold. We have ESAT ult for secure. Once we get a little bit of room... We pull it. I tell them they're still too mid, that they don't need to worry. Um, they start coming over now. I tell them that I'm coming as well. Since we used our ESET ult to secure, it's a little bit sketchy. Freaking Sprack farmed here. Go back to one times and go back a little bit. So we get the gold with the ESET ult. Mike's going to get all in here because he's gonna, he just can't get away. He's going to get stunned. He's going to get cracking and everything. But Sprack blinks in, I'm pretty sure, and farms both these guys. Like, look how hard he owns them. We actually would have killed both if my jump was up here, but I used it to clear the mid wave and it didn't come back up. I could have jumped to this Poseidon, come back to this turn, and we would have killed both of them. Um, but Sprack just tries to live. I make sure we get the kill on the Dardes. I used my ult just to confirm it because Fafnir was coming over and he was going to stun me. So I didn't want his CC to, you know, stop me from getting the kill. So overall, we get goal, but three of us die. We kill their turn and get their Poseidon beads. Close. It should have been probably a, a three for two. Because it's not like Poseidon knew my jump wasn't up, you know, like he was just in a bad spot. Um, but I'm still really strong on the map, so I can go push the mid wave, I can get these right mids, and I can go get pressure on the right side of the map and keep the farm going. So overall, we're still pretty much in the exact same spot we were before, it's just the objectives are off the map, so. So we'll go back. We probably could have played that better, but, uh, you know, first first game of the set, a little, little nervous, I'd say, and... Uh, and honestly, Warriors your Warriors did a good job punishing us. That's one way to play against Eset is she maybe can get the objective, but she's using her big ult to just secure that. So if you can fight after, especially if you can onk her and then fight after, they'll be taking increased damage and uh, they just won't have that big ult, so you can maybe win the fight. It's because his last name is Spracklin. Lucas Spracklin, so he, it's called Sprack is his, his nickname. So I go Bork this game because look at their comp. Once again, just a lot of like shred. They have Nemos. They're going to be Fafnir stunning into like uh, 
uh, steroid plus you know just a Poseidon Kraken they just have a lot so Bulwark is a lot better in my opinion than like a Genji's or an Oni Hunter's because my strength in a team fight will be that I can survive their all in maybe and keep going um, and it's just a really tanky item um, so right here I'm calling missing on the map we don't really have great wards uh, solo side of the map he could be anywhere I'm telling him hey let me just get pressure in my lane and I can rotate over I do have TP and blink up at this point uh, once you get blink on Kukulin it's time to hold the W key and go dicko mode right Yo, Spongy, thanks for the year-long reset. Welcome back to the Ponzo family. Appreciate it. I'm just keeping track of where Lance is on the map, using my two so I don't transform when I don't really necessarily want to. And, like, you know, we're basically unkillable. I see animations on that Sharpie, so I just chill a little bit because them could come over. I'm still pretty unkillable when it comes to a gank. If they chase me out forever, they'd kill me, probably, but if my team just rotated over, it'd be fine. But something you have to keep in mind is turn ults. Turn ults can always be used to, uh, to win a fight by just being there when they can't be there. Pyro's coming up soon, and it looks like they wanted to go for a Scorpion, so I tell my team we could actually fight this. I don't think anything really happens from this, but I see them on the the, uh, the Scorpion, and we don't really want to give this away for free, so I decided to get in there. I dash the Nem. Almost catch her dash. Unfortunately, did not, though. And they dash away. No big deal. Just We tried and go for a fight. Nothing really happens, but it's good to look for. Don't want to give up your Scorpions and stuff for free. Making sure we're doing our blue buffs on cooldown. It's actually good for me to keep him far with the Lancelot. Lancelot's really good at farming. And he's also very good at rotating. So, so far, so good. He's a little bit ahead because we share that wave. He's just going to have, like, maybe, like, a quarter of a level on me. I think this is where the f another big fight happens. Mm, maybe not. I was looking to rotate... What exactly we're we doing here? Oh, we were just grouping up because Pyro's up, and we're to get some pressure on the mid tower. Think I juke the hammer here? Yeah, he was trying to look for a hammer. I just backstep it. We're looking for tower, but you know they all showed up. It's sort of like a uh, a test, a litmus test. See if they uh, see if they're going to show up for the tower. If they don't, we can probably get a lot of damage on. If they do, we can just back up and go to Pyro, and we just stay grouped by doing that. Lancelot ults through. He kind of jumps it, and just nothing really happens. Don't want to transform if I don't need to. So off the pressure they gave us, or we gave them, they kind of pressure our mid tower a little bit, push the wave into tower and look to to go for it. But we make them back up. So they go to Gold Fury, and I TP back in because they're going to be grouped around Gold Fury here, and then here's another fight. Uh, they're going on my teammates. They're grouped really hard, so this is a perfect scenario for me to just get a blink ult off. I try and hit the turn with it to make sure I can hit him or uh, CC him, but he ults. Then I see that Sprack is going on their backliner here, so I jump towards him and help him out. I kill the Fafnir and dash the, the uh, Nem to keep him away from Pele, keep him away from Sprack to keep him alive. My team's getting killed. Overall, just kind of an even trade for us on the map. Um, just good good job by Sprack and I to get on the same targets. We kind of just one-shot the Poseidon. I go in here to try and mess with them a little bit. I know that I'm pretty unkillable. They'd have to use a lot to even kill me, and a lot of stuff is down. Maybe not the, the best thing to do. Probably didn't need to do it, but um, almost baited out a kill on Lancelot. He lived with one HP, so. Can look for it. Why not? Nothing's really going to happen on the map. A lick me test, yeah. Of course, Art of Smite. Of course. So next up, we're going Spirit Robe. For the same thought process as before, they have a comp that's going to try and blow me up off of Fafnir stuns. Or Krakens with Nemults and stuff. So Spirit Robe, that passive is just going to come in very handy. Um, plus, it's just going to help with my, my Glad Shield as well. That's part of the reason Spirit Robe is so good. Is it gives you 80 procs total for your Glad Shield proc, so it's good. <clears throat> Thank, Magic, Thank you, Magic Wizard. I appreciate the five months, dude. Welcome back. And Toby, thanks for the 16 months. Welcome back to the Fonzo family. Appreciate it. We actually get our Treb here. Definitely important to be looking for those on the map, getting the cups whenever they respawn. Very important objective. Like another mini Gold Fury, so that's always nice. The more mini Gold Furies you can get on the map, the, the more you can expand on your lead or gain a lead. And uh, obviously the Treb's actually pretty important for pushing as well. So he backs here, so I want to clear at the tower line so I can get enough pressure. What I want to do here is one the whole wave, but not full clear with my ult. I want to be able to use my one and three on these front minions so that I can get some rage back. Notice that I didn't won the wave, ult it in the rage form to make sure it all dies. You want to get some of that rage back before you rotate so that you're 
going to be more likely to get to your next transformation. I just tell my team my spirit robe is ready. They can defend at the goal. Nothing really is going to happen. We see people on the map. I'm good to back here. You just need to make sure that you can back on the map before you actually do it. So you don't lose out on anything. They couldn't threaten fire because my, my teammates had eyes on them. So I have spirit robe. I'm really strong here. Just want to be grouped with my team. Fight at this gold fury. It's very important. It's an Oni fury. A lot of times your job as a soul laner is actually to push out mid waves with your mid laner or just by yourself because you can't actually get killed. You can kind of just be able, like a walking ward and be like a meat shield for your teammates. What's up, Stallone? How are you? It's also your job to kind of be like playing at this high side and coming in for the flank. Warriors did a good job of kind of not allowing me to do that in this scenario. Um, but like I said, just keeping the midways pushed. Telling people where they are. We don't have the greatest worth fire side of the map, so we got to be careful of them going to fire because they have a really good PvE comp. But as long as we can see like their people, um, like in lanes and stuff, we don't have to worry too much. This is the first game maritime. Am I not on? Oh, I've been on one times this whole time. Oops. Go back to one point five. Just hovering a lot. Something you have to do. When they have like this much of a threat on objectives, it's you just have to be around. Because if you give them like five seconds to pull something, they're just gonna take it and insta kill it. So now we get a bit of a window based on where they are in the map, and we saw an M and right, so we just use our E set ult to secure this. Everybody runs away. Pretty good. But once again, they're using that to maybe pressure out our mid tower or go to fire. So I believe the call here was to defend this tower. But, like, put up sort of a soft defense. We don't want to just give them this for free. So I figured I was going to blink ult in, get a bit of damage off, and back up if I really need to. Um, now the wall is down, so I go in after the wall is down because they can actually hit the tower now. So we're just buying the most amount of time as possible. Get actually a good engage, get a lot of damage off. Problem is, Sprack actually ults into a Kraken and gets one shot. And they phantom shelled and walk through the wall. So he actually, like... He was trying to kill the Poseidon, but because they phantom shot and walked through the wall, it made him hit the get hit by the Kraken. So now Sprack is dead, and we just want to try and make sure we can get Mac out alive. He dies instantly. They are really low though, so definitely definitely uh <clears throat> not in the best spot ever. Like they can't just go straight to the fire, but it's probably likely that they will go fire. So we stop their backs a little bit just to stall them. We know that they're gonna try and back and go straight to fire here. We have Oni waves on the map, so we're getting a little bit of pressure off that. So we're getting a bit of a win in that sense. Um, but we need to be able to defend this fire. Honestly, we shouldn't have all engaged there. I was just going to blink ult, keep them off the tower for a little bit, get some rage, poke them out, and we could have done something off of it. We shouldn't have full engaged, and obviously that was bad. And, uh, you know, you live and you learn. So we see they're pulling fire now. I'm in a bad spot here because I don't have a lot of rage. I probably actually could have gone in earlier here, but uh, I'm sort of just waiting. They're taking a lot of damage. Then we get the E settled in time, and I'm able to get on their backline as they're in the pools. They kind of just get destroyed because of that. They did kind of, uh, they were a little bit hesitant on it, and we had uh, Daniel in range with his E settle and his Spirit Ball. So we just steal it, and I'm able to chase them out. In retrospect, I should have gone in earlier. I needed to jerk them off a little bit earlier there. Um, especially because I knew that Daniel would get there in time, as long as I kept them a little bit occupied. So, could have played that better for sure. But sometimes, you know, you just have to, like, all in a fire, and you, you sit there and do it in, some, in front of somebody's face, and it doesn't go well. And that's what happened with them. So I'm unkillable here. There you have three dead, the only people I work, I really care about. So I'm going to mess with him, push my ways, get their blue, expand on the lead, and now we're in a, a real comfortable spot. Back to 1.5. My teammates are pushing because they still have some dead. We're, we're trying to get uh, some towers and stuff off the map and then spend that gold so that we can come back and siege again with our, our power spikes. A lot of times people, especially in like noob games, you'll just be sieging. Um, you'll be sitting with like 3k gold. You need to spend that gold so you actually have an advantage. You know, you're actually using the advantage that you gain from playing the map and, and winning. Um, so yeah, get the bluestone upgrade, which is 
In my opinion, Bluestone Brute is probably top three items in the entire game. It's insane. Once you get that, you are you can dive so well with a full tank build, and you'll one shot. Um, and then we're gonna go Mail of Renewal last item because I was checking their builds earlier. You guys saw me clicking tab. Just check their builds sometimes. If they don't have anti heal, get a last item Mail of Renewal. It can be the difference maker in a team fight. Um, plus more props for your Glad Shield. More props for your pro your procs. So here I'm gonna be the one to first engage. And it's going to be sketchy because it's getting late game. They have Nemults. They have a lot of damage. Krakens, Fafnir, everything. I need to be the first to engage, though, just so I can get them off the Phoenix line so I can make space for my, my carries to actually hit the structure. Um, honestly, I end up dying here. You're about to see. I probably could have lived if Daniel put his E settled a little bit further. Would have helped me a little bit, but um, is it right? I think it's maybe the next wave. You kind of want to engage right before the minions even hit the phoenix. You don't want to do it when the minions are actually inside of the phoenix because they're just going to clear it too fast. So as you can see here, I count it down. I blink ult, get a couple people with it. They all in me. The wave is now hitting the phoenix, so my teammates are able to hit the phoenix now. They get a little bit of damage off it. Couple, a couple of them live with like 30 or 40%. Fafnir's pretty low. They did use a lot to kill me, though. I got Krakened. I got Nem ulted. They used Fafnir ult. Um, I think Turn beats my blink ult. So like they used a lot to kill me, so my team isn't that... Afraid of actually sitting here and fighting. Even even though it's still a 4v5, at this level of play, you, you can take your wins and, and still like you still have a power play or still feel even. Um could have probably played this a little bit cleaner, but Fafnir just jumps in and gets one shot. Nemesis tries to go on max with uh Nem peeling for him, and now it's a 4v4, and they're all really low, so this Phoenix should be free. Lancelot's still sticking around. Just trading off aggro on this Phoenix so that nobody's taking too much damage from it. Daniel gets a sick wing gust off, kills beside him with it. Um, a little bit sketchy though, because they probably could have helped him. If Max was still helping him here, they would have they would have killed Churn. Because Daniel actually popped off, but all good. Still just a two for two, and we get the Phoenix. I'm telling them here, hey, my TP is up. If they chase out, just like come towards the ward and we can chase him out. Mike gets a nice juke here to avoid the root, gets a nice freeze. So now my team is actually baiting for me to get my TP in because I can chase them out with them. Nothing actually happens from it, but it's just something to something to look for, something good to look for. Warriors were definitely aware of me respawning, and they, you know, most SPL players know, and most teams know that that's a, the play that people are going to be looking for late game, just to TP back in. So they don't really actually chase out because they probably expect it to be happening. So yeah, that was our first death of the game. Honestly, definitely well worth it. I think, uh, like I said, I probably could have even survived if Daniel placed his ult a little bit further up, or if Mike got his shell on me a little bit earlier. He could have maybe even pre-shelled me before I blinked in, so I had my shell, had the shell on me when I was at the back of the Phoenix. Um, so yeah, now we have a Phoenix down, and every time there's a Phoenix down in the important lane, which is the farthest lane from the Fire Giant, all you have to do is wait. You just have to wait, have a, you know somebody on their team is going to go and defend that wave, and once that happens, you can pull the Fire Giant, you can make a, a power play, you can fight them, do whatever you want. Now this game specifically, they have a Chernobog, and one of the strengths of Chernobog is he can be at two places at once. So he can push that wave and then ult over to this fight, and they're not really going to miss out on all that much, right? So um, the power play isn't as uh, crazy as it would be in a regular game, but or other games. But I guess that's kind of also part of the reason globals are so strong. So C turns in left, so our power play isn't as crazy, but it's still there. He's not going to be here right away, and they don't have like auto attack damage like on the front end of a, front end of a fight that we have to worry about, which is good. He has to ult into the fight. Which can be bad for him. Yeah, Blake, thanks for the six months in a row. Welcome back to the Fonzo family. I appreciate it. So, go 1.5. I actually don't remember what happened in the last last, this last fight of the game. So, we pull fire here. I get some wave pressure right with a treb. Nobody's going to go defend that. We get a lot of damage on the fire. And we have E settled. So, we're always going to be the ones to kill it. We just have to worry about the fight after. They onk us and try and fight us, which is what I was talking about earlier. I just realized I'm at 1.5 times speed. So right here, we're just trying to peel back because we're the ones that got the fire giant. I want to keep my teammates alive. So I run to the I run to my teammates first because they're actually not getting hit by their backline for the most part. So I don't need to exactly dive the backline right away, but because he gets a nice spirit raw, I'm transforming. I'm like, alright, I'm gonna switch targets to the beside and make sure I kill him. I wanted to make sure my dash would or my auto would kill. So I made sure I use my dash and we wipe all of them. Both of our carries did die, but we have a Phoenix down. I have Bluestone, which honestly is so troll because 
as a tank, I actually probably do the most damage to the Titan because <laughs> Blue Stone Breach just has so much damage to it. Um, so we kill the tower on the way. We just figure we'll we'll push this wave as we run to the Titan, and uh, we don't actually have to kill the Phoenix to kill the game to kill the Titan and end the game. So we just run past it and and end there. So usually you want to like completely just dive the back line in most fights, guys. But like right there, because we got the fire giant and my team's trying to get away. I just want to try and peel, and I can peel by diving their backline, but they weren't really... The turn literally ulted to my backline, so their backline is in my backline, so what am I supposed to do? Well, I'm just going to try and do the most amount of damage possible and be in the middle of everybody, trying to absorb some damage, and, you know, I got a nice ult off to knock up the turn. It ended up killing him, and then because the Fafnir and Poseidon were grouped up, I ran to the Poseidon and, and just chased him out and killed him, so... So sometimes it's not always always right to just sit there and run at the the carries you know sometimes you do want to be grouped with your your, your teammates it just kind of depends on the scenario um it also depends on where the enemies are in the team fight if they're diving your back line well you better chase them out too so yeah that was game one especially because of this next game which i don't know if we're gonna i mean we, we can watch it you guys want to watch this rack game honestly i was pretty happy with our draft i was feeling pretty confident going into this game a lot of unlucky things happen this game, I'm not going to lie. Yo, Spawns, thanks for Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the Fonzo family. Much appreciated. I played... This was my worst game all tournament. I think... Honestly, it was probably my only bad game all tournament. I think I played every other game pretty well. But, um... I don't know. Something was, something was off about this game. I was missing a lot of abilities. I missed, like, four ults, honestly, that I should have hit, and I usually do hit. Um, and I think this is the first time I lost on Rat in, like... A while, I'm pretty sure. Actually, I lost on Rat to the Kings when we had Sino as a sub, but I don't, I don't include that. Um, I mean, we can go through it a little bit. I'll show you the main parts of the game that went wrong. To be fair, one of the biggest problems this game was I actually think Rat's not too bad into Lancelot, but I was just losing the trades really hard to Nika. He was out trading me in a lot of these scenarios, so they just had a lot of pressure on this side of the map that they otherwise would not have. Like, if I had picked any of my other characters in a Lancelot, he would have had no, no pressure. I'm talking... I think they banned Arthur every game, but it would, could have been Arthur, Achilles, Kukulin, even, like, a, um, even like another warrior, like a, like Osiris or something, Bologna. Any of those characters, Lancelot wouldn't have as much pressure, but I was just getting out-traded. I was not hitting my abilities, and that was a big reason that this game kind of went south. I want to find the uh, the one play... When I say I played this game bad, I rotated actually here because it looked like they wanted to go for red buff. This could have been a really good start to the game for me because I could have gotten a kill and like accelerated my build, got to my acorn quicker. But I think the Warriors knew that maybe I was coming over based on how we were playing, and they all just ran away. And they ended up getting the red anyway. So maybe if I could have gotten there, I could have uh, gotten a good start to the game. But see, I'm already getting out traded here, getting poked out. I'm a little bit behind. And then the main problem, the really bad play for me, was... I think it's about to happen. We're actually not in that bad of a spot. I ult a little bit late to get to my blue buff here. I should have ulted earlier, and I probably would have secured it over Nika. Um, but we at least forced his ult out there, so not too bad. But his ult's a lower cooldown than mine, so not that worth. I at least have my acorn here. I sell my ward so I can get a mana pot to make sure I don't go oom without my blue. Because you actually are pretty mana hungry as rat. Um... So, not in too bad of a spot, but where it goes really wrong for me is my first gank. We actually get that Scorpion, and they use Hunbat's ult, so we're chilling. We just make sure we don't get killed on the chase out. We got their Scorp. We don't really need to fight this, but we got a little bit greedy, and I think we lost this fight pretty hard. Mike just gets all in, and we can't really help him. Ganeshul is really good in these Scorpion fights, because it can just kind of... It just, like, zones out the fight and makes it harder for you to get in. None of my teammates are around to help Mike, so I'm not going to int to help him either. I would just die as well. So we should have just given up that Scorpion because we got theirs and we weren't really strong to fight. So that was bad by us for sure. But we're still in a fine spot. This really isn't that bad. And I, I feel like I'm going to do much more than a Lancelot late game is Rat. I just That's just how I feel about the character, how comfortable and confident I am. We're able to get my blue as well, so we're still chilling. This is where things go really bad, though. I'll go down to one time speed. I play up on uh, Lancelot here for the tone. I miss my dash, miss my stun. Just horrible play. He pokes me out super hard. I'm already low, but I'm greeting my ult here. I'm like, well, he's not going to kill me. I'll just wait. 
he gets me pretty low. My dash is about to be back up, so I'm like, oh, I'm just chilling. I just he just used everything. I'll just you know greed and be fine. He the I don't know if you guys heard, but Cuvo ults the totem. Let me pause the music so maybe you guys can hear. It's really quiet, but. Do you guys hear the Hunbat's ult in the background? I think Kivo meant to blink ult and he didn't blink or something and he ults like over here. He ults like the totem or something. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, well, Humbats is here. I'm dead no matter what if he actually gets his blink ult off. So I'm just, it's just a horrible play by me. Miss everything and not use my ult right away. I'm just greeting. Kind of being disrespectful, to be honest. This is just bad by me. And then I ult late and I'm just dead by that time. I could have maybe even dashed out if I, if I just used that instead. Uh, but I'm probably dead there no matter what just because I didn't ult early enough. That was just kind of disrespectful by me Should not have done yeah. that. So that's where it goes really wrong. That was a really bad death by me I'm pretty sure they do get pyro off this So that's a kill into another kill almost. I think they end up killing a kill into pyro um, So and now it's actually now it's bad for us because before even those deaths and that scorpion wasn't that bad We were still pretty close I was still scaling to late game, but now the Lance has a lead. They get a Pyro. They're going to come back and be even stronger. Um, and that's where the game can get gets a little out of control. And the other point in this game that's really bad are the bounces. Oh, these goddamn bounces. Oh, my God. Here it is. So I have my Acorn and Soul Eater fully stacked. So we actually do a lot of damage to Lance here. I have Pele coming over, so I'm kind of baiting a little bit to let him go on me. He gets some good damage on me. I get my stun off into a knockup. He ults it, which is still fine. You know, we're fine. Still pretty low, but we, we're able to do a lot of damage to him. I can TB back in. Hun comes over, gets a nice ult onto Scream. Scream has to use beads. He bounces it, and it bounces. It hits Sprack, bounces to back to this minion, then goes back to Sprack. And these are all, like, max distance bounces, by the way. And then bounces all the way to me, and I'm just dead. In the moment, I was like, maybe I can dash. Maybe I, can, I was thinking, no, maybe I can stun him right when he TPs. But it's just too fast. The auto comes out instantly, and I'm just dead. And that's when I knew, okay, this game's fucked now. Because usually when I play Rat, I just get loose. It's really hard for me to get ganked. I just make rotations to mid fights or, or duo fights. And here it is again. <laughs> he gets a... He blinks over the wall. Bounces off Mike. It follows Scream. It threw his Pele ult all the way to the towards the speed buff. And he gets his TP off and twos him, and he dies. So, honestly, just really good mechanics by Cubo. Um, with a little bit of luck, but all good plays have a little bit of luck, to be honest. And, uh, yeah, it happens. So, now they're about to have, like, a 3k lead. They're about to get another uh, Pyro, which is going to be up pretty soon, I think. They're actually on their Scorpion. They got pretty poked out by doing our Scorpion. So, I call, hey, my TP's up. This is probably our only chance here. We should maybe take a fight. You know, they're kind of weak. They used a lot recently. I'm going to TP in. Let's try and go in on them. So I, I go to them. I try and land on the Hunbats. He uses B, jumps over the wall. I just start hitting the Ganesha because Max is on him. I miss my stun. Like I said, this was not a good game by me. I beads to, I pre-beats the two so I can kill the Ganesha. And I'm like, well, if I can kill Hunbats here, this actually isn't too bad for us. But then Heim, Heimdallir shows up out of nowhere. So now the game's practically over. Heim just shows up out of nowhere. And they just have a really good lead from ahead or a really good comp from ahead. And they have a big lead. They can do fire at this point. We're down 10 to 1, about 4k, about to be 5k. They're going to do pyro again. Uh, just not good. Just honestly, bad mechanics for me this game. I don't know what, what it was. Usually I don't play like this on rat, but had a rough one. The fat, it went down. And like I said, what I want to do on rat is get loose, which basically means like avoid fighting in my lane and walking over and ulting over to fights or, um, you know, proxying, forcing rotations to my lane and just ulting out and wasting their time. But I didn't do any of that this game. There was a lot of fighting towards my side of the map. And I didn't really get to use my rotation prowess to actually like impact the game. Um, so combined with the fact that I was playing bad, I couldn't actually use my character the way I wanted to. And I got punished in the mid game and couldn't get to the late game, which is where I'm really strong. It just made me kind of, kind of useless. And a lot of it was my fault, like I said. And it all stemmed from that greediness and that first gank. I could have just ulted out and been fine and we would have been chilling. But So yeah, this game's practically over because of that. Um, probably not much too much. Not... Much more to go over. Do you go Soul Eater Acorn first? Depends on the lane tricked. If I have kill potential early game, I like to get my tier 2 Acorn and then just go full Acorn. So if I, like, I'm in a lane where I'm going to hit them and actually have some kill potential or maybe go for that first blue invade, 
I'll just go tier 2 Acorn because it gives you more power early game, which can help you get a kill. And it gives you a little bit of sustain. So yeah, bad game. So I'm like, I'm telling my team, I'm like, guys, that game was on me. I played horrible. Time to have the memory of a goldfish and forget that one and go into the next game with a clean slate. And uh, yeah. So this game, we're actually able to get the Lancelot first pick, which is really strong. They instantly go Arthur. A lot of teams, I don't know for sure. Like I said, I'm only talking about uh, my perspective in my role. I'm not talking about my teammates or anything like that. And I don't even know how the other teams feel. But I think a lot of teams this tournament, when they played against me, felt like they needed to pick Arthur when it was up so that I couldn't get it. They maybe even didn't even want to like first pick it or second pick it, but they wanted to make sure that we couldn't get two really strong picks or that I would get Arthur plus another really strong character like Lancelot or like Esed or characters like that. So I think a lot of teams felt pressured into picking the character when they necessarily wouldn't pick it in the same spot that I would, if that makes sense. So yeah, that happens. We get some we get some picks and yada yada yada. Um, they ban out route, which I think is troll by them, um, because I would just get I would get absolutely dumpstered by an Arthur in lane if I was rat. So honestly, they should have banned Kakolin because Kakolin is one of the few characters can, that can deal with King Arthur pretty well. They didn't, like I said in the earlier game. I go budget King, or yeah, I just go budget King Arthur here because of all the things I said before. And they basically have the exact same comp they had game one, minus the turn ult global pressure. They just go X-Ball instead. Still a global ult, but, you know, not the same. Uh, but basically the same thing. They're just looking to PvE, do objectives, and blow up one person really quickly with Nem ults, Fafnir stuns, and Poseidon Krakens. Um, so once again, they're going to be really good at pve but we're probably going to be stronger at actually fighting. So that's what we want to do in the throughout the game. We want to be fighting them, punishing them for, like, all ending objectives, stuff like that. So same thing. This game I actually went double Chalice because Baron's Brew is actually pretty efficient on Kukulin because he gets a little bit of HP from the mana. Um, and if I want to fight early game, which I definitely do against an Arthur and uh, at these totems with Lancelot, the uh, the double sustain going at once is pretty strong. It's like having health pots and multi pots going. Um, so yeah, same thing. No tier one item. You don't need to. You just got to go bluestone and a bunch of pots. This is a pretty, it's a volatile matchup if you don't know what you're doing. But when you know what you're doing and you both go Sovereignty, it's just a stalemate lane. You're both just going to sit there and hit each other a little bit here and there. You're going to clear the waves. You don't really have any kill potential on each other as long as nobody makes a grave mistake. Um, so yeah. It's a good thing Kukulin is there to actually stalemate lanes like this against Arthur because otherwise Arthur would just run rampant and go crazy. So like I said in that last game, I hit him a little bit to make sure I can tank a little bit of the archers to stack up my rage a little bit faster. Arthur actually outclears Kukulin really easily level 1, but Nika didn't, he actually didn't play that far up on this wave, so he should have sat here and hit me the whole time, but he didn't, so I actually cleared basically the same exact time, and we just one-shot the totem. Looks like Nem's not even here. She's probably going to be around mid or something. Um, so yeah, actually pretty good for us to get the totem in that scenario, because Arthur should outclear me really hard. All he has to do is, uh, you know, abuse the fact that he has four abilities, or two abilities. And we'll use them four times versus my three, I guess. Just using my transformations to uh, to fight and gain pressure. Don't really want to fight before I don't have it, or before I have it. He's playing back because he doesn't want to get hit by it. Good juke by Nika there to avoid my one, actually. Yo, Chroma, thanks for the year-long resub. Much appreciated, dude. Welcome to the Fonzo family. It's unfortunate that little mechanical outplays like that don't really matter, though, <laughs> anymore. Totem's coming back up, like I said in the last game. It's really important to have pressure on this wave to get this totem, plus uh, have pressure for blue buffs, but Nem was uh, a little bit faster than Scream to the totem, and I also got out-cleared a little bit, so they uh, they won that, that mini Gold Fury. I actually decide I'm just going to back and get a Steel Mail here. Just get a tier 2 so that I can kind of uh, refresh my pots and maybe bully him out a little bit again. Because um, as Kukulin, I'm not really I'm not really that worried about... Uh, a lot of times, when you TP in without your item, you're worried about getting enough pressure so you can actually back and come back to your lane in time without missing any minions. But as Kukulin, that's just something that I don't have to worry about because all I have to do is transform, and he won't want to fight me, and I'll get enough uh, pressure that I can just back and run back to my lane. Um, 
So we actually poke him out a little bit because we TP it in with fresh pots and a fresh tier 2 item. And now I just decide I'm going to maybe zone him a little bit, try to make him play up so that uh, he doesn't get enough gold for his sovereignty. Um, he'll, he'll be getting his sovereignty pretty soon, but like I said, I'm not really that worried. I'm not going to get pressured that much as Kukulin without my full item. I think he's actually going to TP back in with it now. All I have to do is clear this wave really fast, and I should be good. I can just get myself. Why do you guys EGS? Um, for fun. And to reinforce some things, I guess. So he's still a little bit poked, and he still hasn't backed for his item. So I decided to hit him a little bit. And because of that, I stack up my reach pretty quickly. And, you know, he just kind of has to play back because of it. We force him back a little bit more. Now he wants to back in TPM with his soft. So because of that, he just now got his back off. My abilities are coming back up. I'm going to hard push this wave so I can run away and simply back for my soft. Um, because we have enough pressure against Braxardy on my blue, I can just go to my blue, pick that up, and then back for my sovereignty. And even though I TP it in early, and I, uh, I maybe should be punished for that, uh, nothing really came from it. Just because I, I'm aware of my matchup, I have enough knowledge about the matchup where I can just chill, use my pressure when I have it, and there you go. Um, he maybe gets a slight XP lead off this if he sits here and zones the minions, which I think he did a little bit, so, but not that big of a deal. Small wins like that do not matter these days. Because Kama got nerfed like a ton, Darash. He doesn't he doesn't get played anymore because his ult's on a million second cooldown. So yeah, like I said, slight XP lead on him, but it's all good. Just tanking these minions because the minions do no damage to me, especially when I have Sov and a fresh set of chalices. Nice gank by Scream to to punish the Poseidon ADC. They get a first blood on him, which is really nice. That's fine for him to use his charge ult on me like that. I just group up the wave with my my charge ult or my uh Rage ult. I start hitting the tone, but I back up because I don't have abilities up and I don't have enough rage where I want to sit there and fight that. Because his his charge ult's gonna be coming back up, so I just get out traded really hard there if I sit there and eat all of his abilities. So instead I run and get the cup and do the back camps with my mid laner, like I said in the last game. You just kinda wanna do those those bad boys whenever they're up if your jungler's on the left side of the map. Now that I actually have some rage and my teammate is around, I hit the totem a little bit. Um Sprax on my blue, so I was like, alright, I'll come do the blue real quick. He also goes to his blue, so I'm pretty sure I can still get the totem here, which I do. So small wins. I ward for a gank because I am a little bit killable to an Arthur plus a Nemesis. That's just, you know, Arthur has so much setup for ganks and Nem ult will shred me down. But So we play up and we, we transform because that's, that's when we're strong. He's pretty low mana, which we recognize. It's a problem I do not have to worry about as Kukulin. So I'm just playing at his tower line because I have a ward. I have the enrage form. He's low mana. I see the Nems over here. But I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Um, in fact, if she ganked me at this point, it'd be good. Because my teammates could come over. I would bait long enough. So we're just playing up at tower line with our pressure. Abusing the fact that he's low mana. TP's back up, and we know his is as well. So because he TP's in early, and I still have a health chalice that I can use, I can get some pressure here, do totem. I can do some like farm on the map, get another wave, and not really have to worry too much about a gank. I can actually greed my glad shield, so I'm pretty sure that's what I end up doing. Get another totem for my team. Still basically full HP, use my Chalice because I only need a couple more waves. Uh, plus my blue buff, and I'll have my Glad Shield. Yo, Mad Hatter, thanks for the seven months in a row. Welcome back to the Fondo family. Appreciate it. I think Nico could have done a better job there to just like hitting me. Because uh, just to poke me out so that I can't sit there and greed my Glad Shield because he's the one who TP'd back in and wants to be strong. Um, but because he didn't, I basically get away with... I get away with murder here. I have Mike rotate over just to make sure I can secure my blue, just in case they want to invade it because they have the power play and they have a ward on it, but they end up not doing it, and I can back after this wave for my glad shield and TP back in and be very, very strong once again because, once again, they have four fizz or three fizz on this side of the map plus a Fafnir because their Poseidon's their only magical, and he's their ADC. Yo, thanks, Blake, for the 45 months in a row. Welcome back to the Fondo family. So now I'm the strong one because I TP back in with my power spike, so I start hitting him so I can poke him out, and it's just that simple. It's it's a game of, uh... It's a game of, uh... Who's, who's strong at the time, basically. Thanks again, Blake. So I guess we're gonna fight over uh, Scorpion here. I'm stronger. I'm gonna out-rotate because Arthur has to back. He doesn't have his glad shield, so I rotate here to look for something. X-Ball ults. Don't really know what's going on. Only person was Fafnir. I, I call to do the Scorpion here because Arthur's never going to be here. We have pressure because we push them out. So we get a Scorpion for free. Could maybe consider doing Pyro here, but we don't really have like the greatest burn for it at this point. And 
you know, are a little bit poked. So we just want to do our own Scorpion, do the Morbius sweep. And we get both Scorpions, which is really strong. And if we just get out here, it's a win. So I'm just trying to peel for my team. I actually get a lot of damage on X-Ball here because I'm able to hit him with every single ability. So I'm calling to my team, yo, I'm on X-Ball, I'm on X-Ball. We push him out. I go back to my teammates because I'm not going to catch that X-Ball and these people are out of position. We kill Faf, get the X-Ball to get out of the fight. So we turn around and go for the Arthur. Huge outplay. Just a really smart play by uh, Daniel here. He flickers past the Arthur because we know he's going to try and charge ult away. So he catches the King Arthur charge ult. Really sick play by Daniel. And we kill Nika because of it as well. So just kind of trying to... We, we got a win there. So all we have to do is back up. But if the enemies are going to overextend and make a bad play, we're going to punish them for it. So that's what they did. I get a nice ult on the X-Ball. Push him out. Come back to my team and peel because that's only... There's the only people left in the fight. So, so we push... Uh, solo together get a wave under tower nem's probably going to soak that up which is fine still going to get it under tower which is good just doing our jungle together always doing your blue buff together because it's just generating more xp on the map uh, we didn't do pyro right after because we want to make sure our waves are pushed waves are really really important in smite and uh it would have taken a while we used a lot there it just was like wasn't in the cards we can always push waves get pressure and come back and be strong again because we have a nice little lead now um, you know, we can do the exact same thing when we come back and get wave pressure. So. And I'm once again stronger than Arthur now. I have a bit of a lead because of the kill. Still have Health Chalice and Baron's Brew going. I'm gonna in, uh, Enrage soon. Use my 1 and 3 to delay it, so I can actually have it for the wave. Like I said, actually bad play by me there. I need to make sure I connect my 3, but I just didn't hit it. But like I said, Kukulun's one of the few characters that can actually deal with Arthur and, and fight him. That totem's 1 HP, so I kind of just want to hit this guy a little bit and then go and hit the totem. Spring, Scream comes over and actually does uh, kill it. But Same thing as the other game is Kuku. I just want to make sure I'm using my jump to avoid certain abilities, important ones. We get a little bit of pressure because Sprat comes over and feigns like a gank on the, on the Arthur. Arthur plays back. They go over to Pyro. They have Merlin burst for it. And Mike just zones them out mid because he's actually playing a character that can kind of independently threaten people as baron you know some guardians couldn't do that but baron can sit there root them to them one them and they're going to be feeling bad you know so i come over because we're looking to maybe go gold here as well i get it poked out by arthur a little bit but we at least force the uh the x ball dash and i'm like all right our right jungle's up i'm just going to go back and do that let's just chill we're getting a nice little lead just by kind of playing the map well yo dark wolf thank you so much for the five gifteds much appreciated dark wolf thank you thank you welcome guys and mr mustache thanks to tier three for 21 months Holy, can we get some hype in the chat for the Gifteds and the Tier 3? Please and thank you. What's up, Dark? How are you? Yeah, of course, Salty. Of course, Salty Omelette. It's just more of the same, guys. Just fighting. Because I can. I'm strong. Keeping the farm up as well. We know that the TP is up. Whenever your TP is up, make sure that you... You can tell your team, you know... On my way, place a word for teleport, stuff like that. If you're just trying to VGS, or if you're actually in comms with somebody, you can just tell them using your voice, your beautiful voice. And it is beautiful. I know it is. So I'm just going to back here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go Bulwark again for the same reason I went at game one. They have Poseidon Krakens, Nem Ults, just a lot of bursts that I want to be able to have a shield for when I get low. So... As you can see, I TP before the Arthur. I get wave pressure before the Arthur. So because of that, I use my pressure to do something. I tell my team on my way, I say I'm going to rotate before the Arthur. Let's do something here. Let's get this shit, right? Let's obtain this bread. So I tell my team that. So they start baiting a fight out. I tell them we can maybe get on X-Ball. The X-Ball ults, I don't really know what's happening. And by the time it's over, they're kind of backed up. So we're like, all right, let's pull gold here. We got a nice amount of room. We made enough room to do it. We burst it really fast. And we get a win. We run away from... From the fight after the win. I remember this being a little bit troll. I walk back into mid here because I want to go for this mid wave. They're both just zoning me. My jump gets canceled like three times. Because that's just how it goes sometimes. I'm perfectly fine here. You know, I'm a warrior solo with the lead. With like double defense against their X-Ball. I'll take a little bit of damage, but I have double brew. Mike walks in though, which was pretty bad. I don't think he should have done that. Just because they actually can kill him. He's very immobile. Um, we, did, we did get a lot of damage off in return. This was a little bit troll by them. I still have Bulwark proc. I still have my charge ult up. Um, so they end up getting the mid tower off of it. So in retrospect, we neither of us probably should have walked through there. Both probably should have just gone around and defended the tower because the mid tower is really important. Um, so we end up giving a mid tower for that. So overall, Gold Fury for mid tower plus a support kill. Probably a pretty even trade, honestly. So not great by us. 
in those scenarios, we want to be extending our lead and not just like evening out our lead even more. We want to extend the lead and snowball even more. And we didn't do that because we gave them an opportunity to fight back. Um, yo, Jeff, thanks for the two years in a row. Much appreciated, Jeff. Thank you, thank you, dude. Appreciate you, big dog. Same thing, going to go Spirit Row for Glad Shield procs and because it's good into their comp. Once again, I get uh, wave pressure over Arthur, so I look to rotate before him. Just got to be doing something. Always be doing something in Smite. Once you're done clearing your wave, look for another camp to do. Look for a fight to rotate to. They made a nice, a pretty nice fight over here. Nothing really comes from it, but we were going to rotate first, which is all that matters. Um, I get a nice blink bolt off on X Ball. This is a little bit sad. I swear I hit my ability here. I guess we can finally watch it back. Um, so we're just grouped before them. We push them out of left. They get really low. So we're just like, all right, let's go mid here. Maybe we can get this mid tower with our trebuchet, or we can look for a fight. X-Ball is playing really far up. He's almost 60% HP. I still have my blink ult up. It's really hard for X-Ball to actually dash a Kakolin blink ult. If he does it right away, he can, but you risk the, uh, you, uh, you risk getting your, your dash interrupted. So this is what I was going to see. He got blink ulted, then he gets knocked back by Lancelot. And I won him, and my one just doesn't hit. Maybe I missed it. Let's see that again. I guess maybe a little bit off? I don't know. It looked like it was going to hit. So we chase out the X-Ball here because he's really low. If he doesn't shell there, he's dead. And we get him to 1 HP, barely don't kill him, and are able to get the mid tower off of it. Which is actually a little bit sketchy for us because, like... Like we've been talking about, they have a really good PvE comp. They can all in objectives really easily. So as we run away here, we need to make sure that we can get back in time for like a Fire Giant or even a Pyromancer. Worst case scenario, we give up Pyromancer, but we really don't want to give up a Fire Giant this early in the game. Yo, Don Bones, thanks for Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the Fonzo family. Much appreciated. Yeah, to be fair, I just wasn't prepared for Scream to knock him up after that. We see that they're not on fire. X-Ball's in mid. We're kind of seeing the animation, so we're going to just do blue. I still have my TP up, worst case, if I need to TP back in. They get Pyro, which is fine. Like I said before, we're prepared to give up some objectives on the map with their comp. It's just going to be good at that. It's going to be better than ours, especially this game. We had an E set the other game, which was good, but now we don't even have that. We're just much better at fighting than we are objectives, whereas they're, they're the other way around. So I TP back in to make sure I'm around fire just in case I need to be there because they're going to be strong at it. I bring some wards as well. Notice I don't get a sentry ward. I just get two regular wards because at this point in the game, it's actually kind of more important to have two regular cheeky wards around the, the fire giant side than it is um, to just have like a sentry ward on top of the fire giant. You get just as much information from having a ward like maybe right here and like up here as you do a sentry because you actually see them walk into the fire giant and that's when you know that they're going to be pulling it. You actually know earlier that they're going to be pulling it. Because you see their path and who's there. Like, if we see the Poseidon walk over a regular ward, walk into this fire giant, we instantly know they're going to be going for the fire giant, right? Um, it is important to have a sentry on fire so you can actually see the HP and stuff, but by that point, you're going to be the walking ward. You're going to walk in and see what the HP is and stuff. So, Plus, they're just going to D ward. If they're trying to go fire, they're going to bring a sentry. They're going to sentry the fire giant, and then now you have no vision. So you want to have some cheeky regular wards. So we get our spirit room, make sure we buy our power spikes. Honestly, this is just a grief play by Sprack. He sees a Poseidon. He gets baited really hard because their entire team is there. He sees a Poseidon, so he's like, all right, I'm going to go on him. He just guns it down. I'm pretty sure he said in comms, like, go, 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 Poseidon, Poseidon. And, and Max was like, uh, and it ended up being bad. It ended up being bad. Max dies for it. They both die. They have the PvE comp. So what they should do is reset and go straight to fire here, which is I'm pretty sure what they do. We need to stall for 30 seconds um, if we can. Uh, but we know that they're going to go Fire Giant here. What we need to do is make it as hard for them as possible and maybe get some kills along the way so we, they, they all don't have Fire Giant. Just a bad play on the map. They shouldn't have done that, but we have to do what we can to stabilize. So they're pulling Fire Giant here. I jump over, get a nice ult off, trying to just live because they're chasing me out. They're kind of teeter-tottering on the actual Fire Giant. Fafnir takes a ton of damage from the Fire Giant itself, so he dies. I'm just trying to peel and live and try and keep uh, Daniel alive so he can get some abilities off. He's living with such low HP. Gets away, gets away with 1 HP, so I have to use my Blink 2 to even get him. I barely even kill him. He dashes away. I make sure I hit my jump on him and kill him. So now it's just a 2 for 2. Two of their fires are off of them, which is good for us, but 
we're kind of just trying to make the most out of a bad situation that was uh, just a bad play by us from before. So, honestly, not too bad. So now we're just trying to stabilize. <clears throat> my job, basically, on these anti-sieges is to uh, make space for my teammates, like always. You know, get a blink ult off to try and push them off the tower lines if we're defending our towers, if we're defending our phoenixes, whatever. Um, and then kind of deciding in the moment whether we're, it's good to engage, like, go all in. If my teammates can actually follow up with me, especially my jungler, Sprack, then we can maybe go all in and dive them outside of our Phoenix line or our tower lines. But for the most part, I'm just trying to slow them down, make it hard for them to get all the gold off the map with this Fire Giant. Because if they can kill all of our towers, get a Gold Fury, get the Pyro again, they're going to have a sizable lead on us. And if we could just stall that a little bit, make it harder for them to just run around the map and wipe the whole thing, then, you know, that's better. Also, I'm just trying to find my Bluestone here. Like I said before, Bluestone Brutes is probably top three items in the entire game. It's a huge power spike, and it can be the difference maker in a team fight. So I tell my team, I'm just going to farm for Brutes here, get a little split push going, threaten this tier one a bit. We can give up the tier two if we need to. I'm telling them I can TP if I need to. They're like, no, 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 we'll just give it up. Bada bing, bada boom. I get a Bluestone online. They get a bit of a lead because they've killed a couple towers and a gold fear, I believe. But if we defend these next tier twos, we should be fine. They won't have that big of a lead, and we can just fight the next fire. Just make sure we don't die. The worst thing is for one of us to die or a couple of us to die, and then they go Phoenix and kill more people, kill the Phoenix, maybe even end the game. Is Mail of Renewal better than Sov? No. It's only better when you're against a magical in lane because it gives you magical prots. And, uh... But if you're against a physical jungler and a physical soul laner, Sov is much better. But you can go both. So they get that tier two, but we kind of we slow them down a little bit. They're not they didn't get the the mid tier two. They ended up getting a, a pyro as well. So even though we were in the lead by about two k, now they're in the lead about four k. Not really that big of a deal this at this point in the game. What's most important is that we're uh, XP wise still pretty close, and we are getting to our level twenties because those level twenty power spikes are really important. And yeah, as long as we're close there and we're matching their starter item upgrades. We'll be fine, especially in my role. If a King Arthur has an upgraded bluestone and I am sitting on regular bluestone as a Kukulin, I am going to be so much more, uh, or I'm going to be so much less impactful than the Arthur in the team fight. So, as far as my role goes, I just try and match that. Go on this demo a little bit here, poke her out because she goes in the greedy way. Unfortunately, I'm not playing a character that can pop Magi's very well. I have to use my ult to do it or be enraged. Um, so yeah. Now we're just going to try and make sure that we're at this fire giant. It's going to be my job to be kind of like the first person in, second person in, depending on how it goes. Um, and all I really want to do is blink ult their Poseidon. That's the main target, their Poseidon or their X-Ball, and just chase them down because I have so much kill potential on them with this full build with the, the blue stone. Um, so I'm just kind of being the first one in, looking around, trying to zone. I get a nice ult off. They actually all in Mike there, and Mike is really tanky at this point. So I just peel back. Try and stay with my team, because if I dove right there, based on how much dam damage they already did to me, they would have just killed me. I would have just inted. So I peel back. We kill a Fafnir. Sprat gets a huge Lance ult off. My blink's still up, so I help him dive because he gets like a five-man Lance ult. Unfortunately, we're kind of like tanking fire here. And uh, I just realized, we'll just watch it back in one times. We we're kind of tanking fire, so that kind of didn't help. So Mike and I are just being the first ones up, because we're the tanks. They jab Mike and all in him. You could tell that this was their game plan, even from the other game. They started wanting to use a CC, whether it was like a Fafnir Sun or a King Arthur Jab, into Nemel, into Kraken, and just try and one-shot somebody. But it was really bad for them to choose Mike as their target, because he has Lono's Mask and is just really tanky. So I'm just trying to peel, make some room, buy some time, get my Rage off so I can come back and you know decide what we want to do. I push the Fafnir into my team. We basically just one-shot him because we have an Artemis. Because of that, they all group up trying to help out their, their support. So Sprack just guns it down through all five of them, almost like fucking, I don't know, Rengoku just slashing through, right? And he gets a five-man Lancel, gets a ton of damage off. So I'm like, all right, I can help Sprack now. He kills Dardes. I'm like, my blink's still up. I can just kill this Poseidon. Bada bing, bada boom. And uh, we just win the fight off of it. Honestly, we win the fight because they make a bad decision, which is just something that just happens, you know? You gotta, you gotta take advantage of your enemy's mistakes. It's not always you being the proactive one. So right here, he needs he doesn't want us to do fire, but with him being alive, it's actually pretty sketchy for us to do fire. So I'm telling my teammates, I'm I'm gonna be telling him, like, yo, bait me, bait me. I'm trying to back. Because I actually do want to back because I can TP back in and I can pull the fire and then we'll be fine. But I also know he's gonna try and stop my back. So I'm like, alright, bait me, we can kill him. He dashes there, but he wants to stop my back again. 
And Daniel sees him, so he's like, all right, I'm just going to go kill him. So Daniel dashes in and kills uh, Nem here. So Kubo did what he needed to do. He needed to stop my back so that we couldn't pull the fire giant. But because of that, we used it against him and baited him, and we were able to get a kill off of it. Um, and now, because they're all dead for so long, and they stalled us, we actually can get fire for all of our team. Um, it's not enhanced fire, but we can wait and wait for our teammates to respawn, and then we can give the, the fire giant to them. So we all have fire giant, all five of us, and uh, we'll feel pretty strong about that. So we just get it really low. I'm telling Max here, Fafnir will never get here in time, just based on like the game sense of knowing when he respawned and how long it would take. I'm like, he's never going to make it in time, don't worry. Um, so we just keep it low, wait for us to respawn, and boom. Now all five of us have fire. I can farm up to my mill of renewal here. And I can have mill renewal for this siege. Once again, they have a comp that's not really going to be good at having anti-heal. Um, because they have an X-Ball mid. He's not an ability-based hunter, so he doesn't really go brawlers. They have a Nem jungle who can't really go brawlers if she wants to go a good auto-attack build. So I just go mail renewal last item. <clears throat> so. Just doing our job this game, honestly. Haven't really done anything that crazy. Haven't really popped off. Just doing my job. Staying in front of people. Being a good frontliner. Making space. Killing people when I need to. And... Sometimes that's all you got to do, especially when you have really good teammates like me. Um, so yeah, I can be the human ward right now, just walking around looking for people. I'm basically unkillable. I would die eventually, but if I can bait long enough, my team would just kill everybody. So right here, my TP's coming up in 20, and their Nem's trying to split push. I don't want to give her a free Phoenix in mid. So I back here, and I say the Nem's backing. She gets her back off. I can TP in 8 seconds. All they have to do is wait. They don't need to start a fight and just wait for my TP to be up. And instead, we just decide we're going to go mid and get the towers, get all this gold off the map, and spend it. Um, so, yeah. Free tier twos. They're giving these up because it's a little late in the game to be defending tier twos. They will just lose the game off of it if they don't fight well enough. I think they kind of soft defend this one, but it's just so hard for them to play up into a Baron. Mike's just going to spam his abilities. One wrong move by them, and somebody's getting sucked. So we're just getting all the gold off the map. We do the towers. We get the scorpions. Get the pyro. We can come back with that movement speed. And now what we want to do is basically just get wards on the map for the next fire giant and be really strong. Um, as long as we're not going for a another phoenix push, which I'm pretty sure we don't. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. We don't. We're just playing up, maybe looking for a Phoenix. Maybe they make a mistake and we can kill somebody. We can get a Phoenix. I don't know. It's also good to just push them back so they can't get a bunch of uh, free wards on Fire Giant side of the map. Um, yeah, we keep them back, and then with that pressure, we push them back, and then we can walk back towards the fire once it's respawning. We go get a reset on the red buff to see when that respawns. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Just kind of keeping them under their Phoenixes, keeping them scared. So even though they do get back up to this fire giant, we didn't give them enough time to get like double or triple wards on the map, you know? So get cups because we're really close to our trebuchet and a trebuchet could be the difference maker in a siege. So definitely important to get those. But because fire giant spawning and once again, they have a really good objective shred comp, we need to be grouped here. Daniel needs to come over. Everybody needs to be here because if not, they're just going to one shot this fire giant. Um, so now we start playing up because we're in the driver's seat here for the most part. They're just a little bit better positioning right now. Um, but we're still one of the ones, ones with the lead, and we have the momentum going into this fight. Daniel gets stunned here by Jab, so they're kind of trying to do the same thing, blow up somebody off of a stun. Um, so they end up cracking Daniel. Daniel gets a nice Aegis off, but because the Poseidon is trying Poseidon is trying to uh, follow up off the CC, the person they CC'd was a, a, tank, or a squishy target. They feel really inclined to actually go in on this fight. They get a nice Kraken that's Aegis, but because he's so far up, Mike can get a really, really good Baron ult off. He just... He just sucks off vote for so long. So he gets his nice suck off. I'm like, all right, this is my time to go. I get a huge blink ult off. I'm I'm absorbing so much damage here. The x is not hitting anybody important. Poseidon hasn't hit anybody important besides the Kraken, which was Aegis. We kill Poseidon. I see that Sprax dealing with the uh, Arthur there. He was fine. I'm trying to help out my team chase if we want to do that. Look how much I'm healing Baron, by the way. Did you guys see that 23? That was for my mail of renewal. Um, so they can't chase out anybody over there. So I'm like, all right, I think Sprax calls me to help him, help him out on the Arthur. Sprack has Void Shield is here as well, I'm pretty sure. So he's just a little bit tankier to the R3. He doesn't get one shot. So we kill two people. We're kind of low, but we have a mid wave. So we're deciding to go uh, mid Phoenix here and then back to fire and get enhanced. And that should basically be game. We're going to have a Phoenix down with an enhanced fire giant at this point. That's just GG. So honestly, another really good engage by Mike. Mike's just kind of putting on a montage as the Baron. 
Uh, and good good stuff by Daniel, obviously, to click his Aegis button. <laughs> Yo, Obama, thanks for three months in a row. Welcome back to the Fonzo family. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, Kukulin's just really good at chasing out Poseidon. Like, it's just really hard for him to do anything. Both of the games, I was Kukulin and he was Poseidon. I was just eating his ass. I was just farming him, chasing him out. So I'm the one tanking here because Mike's actually a lot better at zoning his Baron. Like I mentioned before, he just act, he's actually threatening with his abilities. He can do them from range. If they step up, he can just start ulting and they're just kind of screwed. Um, and then Lance is also a little bit better at uh, zoning, especially when my ult is down and I don't have a lot of rage. Plus, I actually kind of want to be the first person hit fire because my bluestone hits a lot harder when it's full HP. Because bluestone is based on their current HP. So when it's full health, I can hit it with my one and my three and then it'll do like 1k to it each. This is the point where Mike is playing really far up. Poseidon's out of position. He gets a nice suck off and he just solos him. Like I said, he's actually threatening in these zones. The problem is <clears throat> I'm pretty sure Daniel flickered in. So he just insta dies because he gets gone on with his flicker down. I try and make sure that Mac doesn't die. Max doesn't die here. He's really important at this point in the game. The most important person on the map probably. Maybe Merlin could be argued. But because x is playing pretty far up and I can jump on him and get some bluestone procs on him, I decide to chase him out. My blink's still up. Mike or Max is actually calling to fucking back up here. He's like, guys, just chill, 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 back up. And I'm like, no, fuck that. I'm going in. Kill Dardes, and I can chase these boys out as well. I'm unkillable to these bozos. Um, we kill three of them. We have minions going to their Titan. I have blue stone, which means I can one-shot the Titan. Chase out them. Barely don't kill her, but this gives us enough of a window to just walk to the Titan and end the game. All we got to do is keep Max alive, and I can take the Titan for a little bit. I could have TP'd back in here, but I don't even need to do that. We already have minions on the Titan. My blue stone's going to do a lot of damage to it, and Max has Oboe, and Oboe's just going to go out absolute dicko mode here. I'm just, you know, we're just calming right now, talking about whether, you know, we need to peel or whether we're good. And he's like, nah, we're good. We end all day, all day, and that's that. And that's game. We end the game top damage, 5 and 7 Even though the slash line, everything looks good, top damage looks good, did I do anything really that spectacular that game? No. Just did my job. I just did my job, and because my teammates are also doing their jobs, it's just good team play. And yeah. Barely out damaged Daniel. 813 player healing mail renewal, baby. So yeah, that now we're up 2-1 in the in the set. We're up 2-1 in the set, and this puts them in a weird spot going into this next game because they just lost with Arthur. This is the second game I played Kakolin where it just I just popped off. No, popped off just like did well, you know? And uh, so now they're, it's just kind of a weird spot picks and bands wise for them, I think. Where like, should they play the Arthur? And because of that, like I talked about early on in the stream when we first started, I'm not going to go too in depth about picks and bands and stuff. But what, as the set develops, why am I, I'm getting a third pick Arthur now. Arthur was getting banned before and now it's just, now I can literally pick it third instead of first or second or anything like that. And that's because the, the set develops on and people's like, uh, um, pick and ban priority changes. Like, they banned Artemis this game because Artemis was just farming in the other games. Here, I'll show you guys. Artemis banned now. Kind of changed their priorities. And because of that, I'm able to get a third pick Arthur. And <clears throat> if, I'm get, if I'm able to get a uh, a later Arthur pick in a draft into a counter matchup, that's just GG. That is just GG. So I'm able to play Arthur into Lancelot this game, which is exactly where you want to be. That is a really good matchup for Arthur for plenty of reasons. You have a ton of CC for Lancelot. You win the early game. Um, you can match his pressure as far as having multiple abilities for like the first totem, the early fights. Um, you can get him off his horse because of your CC, yada, yada, yada. You know, it's just a really good matchup. And of course, like I said earlier, it's because when you have Sovereignty and they have Soul Eater, you're much stronger than them. And when you have Sovereignty as Arthur, you're like the most unstoppable person on the map. And then when you get Glad Shield, you're also the most unstoppable person on the map, unless they have like a magical character that you really have to worry about. <clears throat> so level one pressure is a little bit uh, interesting in this matchup. I want to hit the Lancelot a little bit so the minions aggro onto me so that they don't clear each other. Um, and I just wait for my abilities to become, come back up and I get pressure on the wave. Po end up trading him, out trading him a little bit because I have warrior base stats and he has assassin base stats, which helps a little bit. And because of that, we're able to get the first totem. Their hunt bust doesn't even show up, which is something you know junglers do in the SPL a lot right now as they show up to the totem. Um, because I use my abilities on the totem, I just need to play back on this wave because he's going to have pressure on it. 
because I used my pressure to do the totem. He uses his pressure to outclear this wave. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, they actually get a kill in mid lane. They kill Dardis. Get the first blood, which is just huge. And now with first blood, is just... It's not GG. You can definitely come back from it, but it's definitely putting you in the right spot. Um, I'm getting my abilities back up. Going to be a little bit careful here because I actually don't full clear the wave. I basically always get two points in my one now as Arthur. I very rarely ever put a point in my three these days at level three. Having two points in your one is just so strong because you just full clear. Um, especially if you hit the archers with the close damage in your blue one. And like the other games, that second totem is really important. Gives you pressure. Uh, or that, that wave, it's really important to get pressure because you can do the totem. You can do the sharpie. You can go to their blue if you want. We actually didn't invade blues at all this this uh, set. Um, but you don't have to. We're just getting the small leads. We're getting totems. Getting the mini gold fairies on the map. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, I still have a lot of pots to work with here. I'm about 600 gold off my sovereignty. A very comfy spot for me, for me to be. I can just use these pots to make sure I can get my full sovereignty. And we'll be chilling. Once again, in a matchup, in a match, in a matchup where you're supposed to be out trading them, don't let them run past you and clear the wave. You're just letting them get away with murder, basically, when you do that. So he tries to run past me to clear the wave. I just walk up to him and start hitting him. Totem comes back up. I get that again because I still have pressure. Getting the mini gold furies on the map. Just zoning a little bit. Not really zoning, but just kind of slowing down the lane because I just want to try and get to my sovereignty. I see Hun on the map. I want to waste Hun's time because I want him to... I want to make Hun think that he can gank me. So I play up, act like I don't know he's there. But then when he actually tries to start ganking, I play back a little bit so he can't kill me. Bada bing, bada boom. They dive mid. I think two of them die, but they... They kill, they kill Dardes, but then two of them die. A little bit trolled by them, but yeah, it's not really not big of a deal. So now I have my Sovereignty and my TP's up. I just clear this, run back. My Bluestone should take care of those minions. Make sure that I get credit for him. Thought he would stop my back, so I stop. And then now I TP back in with Sovereignty. And like I said, this is where you really start to, to jam it down Lance's throat because he has a Soul Eater and you have Sov. You're just much stronger and you're in a better matchup. Um, just do my blue. Take too long for Sprack to come over. Make sure I keep getting these totems when I can. I don't want this guy to free frame this wave when he has it back for his Soul Eater. I want to make sure that uh, I threaten him at least a little bit. <clears throat> do totem again. Another mini Gold Fury. This is match four of the semifinals against the Warriors. So he TP back, TP's back in, but his power spike's not nearly as strong as mine because he just has Soul Eater. So because of that, I outclear him because I TP'd before him. I also have more pressure because he can't play up against me. So because of that, what do I do with my pressure? I try and do something with it. <laughs> I walk over to the Scorpion and say, yeah, let's pull the Scorpion. We can fight here. If they come over, we're just much stronger. We get the Scorpion for free. We don't have to do anything. <clears throat> he jumps because he's a little bit afraid of me going on him. And I can just kind of bully him out now. And so we get, we get another win on the map. Another mini Gold Fury just based off pressure. All it is is pressure. And playing around your, your power spikes. He has to sit under here and clear, clear the wave under his tower because if he plays up on the wave, I'll just out-trade him really hard. Pressure. He's still playing back. I clear first because of that. So I can do a totem now. Another mini Gold Fury to the boys. <clears throat> he tries to play up on the wave, so I threaten him a little bit, make him play back again. And... I'm just trying to not give him any window to clear and rotate or clear and do anything to kind of like make the lane better than it should be. You're just not letting him get loose. You He wants to get loose, but you want to be tight. You want the lane to be tight. He wants it to be loose. So when you're, whenever you're in a matchup like this, do your best to make the lane tight, not loose. <clears throat> Especially because he would be better at farming than you would just because he can run around on a horse and you can't. So he tries to clear the wave, so I kind of threaten him and run at him a little bit, get him off his horse. Just to just kind of mess with him a bit. Totem came back up. I tell him that Lancelot could be coming mid, so they just careful on the rotation. My team's aware of it. I get another Totem. And look at the lead on the map. We're up 2k right now, which is pretty good. Pretty sizable lead this early in the game when nothing really has happened. I get a ward on their blue. Just see what he's doing, see if it's up. I say that Lancelot could be coming over, but then he shows up, so we're good. <clears throat> Keep trying to mess with him in his tower line so he doesn't get any like pressure to rotate. Get a little bit of poke on him. 
He should have a fully stacked Soul Eater at this point, so it's not nearly as valuable, valuable. But once I get my Glad Shield as well, I'll be stronger than him once again. So now that he has Soul Eater fully stacked, he's probably stronger than me. But once I TP back in with Glad Shield, I'm stronger. I also have a Gold Lead, so I'll have my Glad Shield before he'll have his. So there's going to be like a probably like a minute or two minute window where I'll have a Glad Shield over him, and it should just be good. I think he comes back here with just tier two Glad Shield. I'm pretty sure, surely. Based on the map state and everything. <clears throat> and everything that's happened. Yep, he's only got tier 2. Yep, there it is. Tier 2 glads. So, I need to abuse that. I have a power spike over him. So, it's time to poke him out. Missed my one there, which was bad. Keeping keeping him at tower line, still good. Place this ward for a gank. Not that they could kill me if they ganked. They really could not, but... Just good to know that they're there. Sometimes the ward isn't for you, but for your teammates to know where they are on the map. And whether they want to counter gank. I actually get a lot of poke off here with my jab. A lot of times having your jab instead of your charge ult is better when you're tower lining people just because you can actually do something with that. So now we're up 3k because <clears throat> we're just playing the map more, getting the totems and everything. Get a nice win in right, I'm pretty sure. They killed Heim. And now they're just going to... Oh, this is the kind of weird play. <clears throat> I rotate over with my pressure. We decide to pull a pyro, which we do end up getting, I believe. They just can't really contest it. We're just so much stronger in this fight. They really cannot fight this side of the map. I still have Glad Shield over Lancelot. So I'm just much stronger than Lance at this point. We also get a, a tier 1 tower in duo, but Max and Mike both die. They kill the tower and they kill Heim. Heim actually took like two freaking treb shots or something. It was so troll, but they end up killing Heim. Even if they hadn't have killed Heim, this still would have been a net win for us on the map. Because we got a tier 1 tower. We got Pyro. I got wave pressure again in my lane. I walk over. We get a bunch of mid tower damage. We go to their back camps. We get their back camps. I think we get a blue buff, so... All in all, even though they killed two of us from behind, which is good for them, because of the state of the map and everything else we got on the map, definitely a net win for us. We're actually almost up 4 or 5k now. Probably like 4k. So definitely a win. Lancelot goes on Sprack here. I come over, get another wave under tower, poke him out once again, and this is just this is just really bad <clears throat> for them. Another win on the map. We get another totem. They chase us out because they want to punish us for our transgressions, but there aren't really any transgressions when you're playing the fucking king, baby. I walk over, say, hey, if anybody wants to mess with us, you have to come through daddy. Silly Neilmaz here. I start body blocking him, slow him. This is where they lost the game. This is, they instantly lost the game here. 4k down at 12 minutes is pretty bad, but it's not unwinnable. They lose the game here because Max goes back to dual lane, solos Heim. Daniel solos Dardes because he transforms into the Lancelot and chases him out and kills him. Through the Hunbats. The Hunbats is there. I'm going on Neil the whole time. I'm like, yo, Sprack, come kill this guy. Sprack was maybe going to go mid to help Daniel, but Daniel just one-shot the, the Merlin, so it's whatever. So he comes back to the Neil. We kill him. So they got two solo kills on the map, and then we chase out Ymir and kill him, and there's nothing they can do about it. They tried to punish us for, for playing for what we did on the map, but they just couldn't. And now we just have too much of a lead, so the game's basically over. So we could watch the rest of the game, but you're not really going to learn all that much. Besides how to not throw a 6k lead, 5k lead, whatever. Um, but yeah, game's basically over. Keep getting the mini gold furies on the map, which is like the totem. <laughs> We've probably gotten like 10 totems at this point. I don't think they've gotten a single one. So that's obviously a win. And that's basically just from the matchup pressure. We have two tier 1 towers that are really low, so we can get those. I'm going to TP mid here because I have blink now. I can make a play. We can maybe even go gold fury. I have a charge ult, so... I'm just around my team. Don't really care about my lane as much anymore. I've done what I needed to over there for the most part. They do get the red buff, but we get a mid wave under tower. Chase them out because we want to pull the gold fury. Ymir's out of position. We could chase him all day just because we have such a lead. We get a free kill on him. Now we can go back to gold and do that. I'm unkillable. I can play in their fucking Phoenix line. Doesn't matter. They just can't kill me. I have a full Genji's now. The only way they could have killed me before was with a magical character. Now Merlin, who takes a while to get online... He's definitely not at that point yet, and now I have a full Gendis for him, and I have a bunch of CDRs, so. Um, so yeah, we get the Gold Fury. We walk over. It's actually good by us in Discipline. We could have gotten their mini Gold Fury, which is the Scorpion, but we just got a big win. We killed Ymir, got the Gold Fury. We're not really that strong in the map, and they're all here. We just we just run away because of that. And because I'm unkillable, I'm just the walking ward. I'm walking around, seeing who's over here, seeing what I need to do. I t I'm telling my teammates. I'm like, they can't kill me. Don't worry. It's really important to communicate to your team if you're like in comms with them. Like whether you're in truck whether you're uh I was about to say in struggle, but um in like a bad spot or not. 
when you have a lead like this and you know what you're doing, you're kind of never in a bad spot as long as you don't int. So you can kind of uh, flex that, flex your muscles a little bit and kind of make it really hard for the enemies to play the game. Um, <clears throat> call that Lance is on that. Mike comes over here because we just want to kill this tower. So it's good to have your teammates around if you're actually trying to do something like that. We can get this tower and rotate over and do whatever we want. Go for the Squirp if it's still up. Look for a fight. We could even dive their mid-tower, which I think is what the play is going to be. So whenever you're trying to dive a tier 1 mid-tower at this point in the game, it's your it's your job to be the first one in, especially when you have Blink, because you want to be the one initiating and getting on them. So I call here. Let's fucking dive this mid-tower. Their Merlin's going to be here. I have Blink chartled up. What I like to do most of the time is I like to Blink knock up first, because a lot of times they'll beads. If you blink knock up, they'll panic and they'll beads right away. And if they beads that, you can simply just wait and chase them out with your charge ult. Or if they don't beads, like right here, I get a nice auto cancel off into a blink into a knock up. Since he doesn't beads, I just take him into the air. He beads now, he wastes it. I do a lot of damage with my charge ult, and he ends up dying anyway because we chase him out. Uh, does he end up dying? He doesn't end up dying, but we kill everybody else. <clears throat> and we just chase out the people in front of us. Just as simple as that. I can't die even diving that tower as long as my team is around. So we kill three of them. And we have a wave in mid, so why not? Let's get a 16-minute Phoenix. And like I said, th this game is just over at this point. The rest of this game is basically just going to be how not to throw. <clears throat> the only person on the map that was maybe in a decent spot was still kind of Nika. He wasn't in a great spot. Like, we did our job against him. And we got every totem and everything like that. But um, after him dying in that mid-fight, all hope was truly lost for them, probably. My teammates are staying on fire. We're doing a good job zoning. We see that Himes and right. We don't have to worry too much. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go kill Neil. Kill him. Merlin can't do anything about it. He just has to watch and, and cry as his poor frost giant passes away. Um, and I have a fat left way, so I go grab that. And I came back for Spirit over Mail over Renewal at this point. Actually, this game specifically, Mail over Renewal is a little bit worse because they actually do have a mid lane mage who can go divine. And they do have a jungler that can build brawlers. So it's probably better for me just to go Spirit Robe, especially against their comp, which has a lot of CC. Although, again, you can't really. You can't really go wrong with this lead, so I just decided to go Mail of Renewal anyway. But like I said, in retrospect, Spirit Rope's probably better because they have a Brawler's Hand of Divine, and I'm pretty sure I said that right then. I clicked Tab, and they're like, eh, I probably shouldn't have done that, but... <clears throat> um, once again, with a lead like this, your job is to be the first one in. So, a lot of times, especially if a mid-Phoenix down, you can just walk through this Phoenix and get in the nook, as we call it. This little nook area. You get in here and threaten them like that because you're kind of just in between. They have to worry about you. It's a lot easier for you to actually walk in. You can get behind them. So I'm literally behind them at this point. It's it's 18 minutes in the game, and I'm playing behind their Phoenix. We insta-kill Ymir. There's no way for him to really play the game right now. I get a nice blink, ult, or blink knock up off once again. Don't have the charge ult, but we're just trying to kill people in front of us. Heim does TP away. Just trying to pressure him out a little bit. Thought we might be able to kill off my stun, but teammates weren't in range. And now it's another Phoenix down, so... Honestly, really not much to go off of here. We were thinking about ending, but we were like, eh, let's just play it safe. We'll go go left. <clears throat> get everything off the map. We get the tower. And we threaten the Phoenix here, just because we feel like we can with this lead. So this was actually a little bit troll by us. Um, a little bit sketchy, to be honest. We get a lot of damage on the Phoenix, and... Um, Gets a nice monkey bounce off, but they're all here to actually defend. And I don't have my blink up anymore. I don't have a charge ult or anything like that. Lancelot ults in. I'm just trying to play back because I don't have blink. I can't really go in. I'm just waiting, trying to get charge and everything. Hitting people that are in front of me. Just trying to front line for my team, absorb damage. We kill Ymir because he's in front of us and I can just stun him. <clears throat> and now Heim's kind of like the odd one out, so we go ahead and chase him out. I missed my two here. This is actually really bad by me. A little bit sketchy, but... We're just at a, we're at a point in the game. We're kind of laughing in comms and trolling a little bit, which we shouldn't have been doing. But this game was just unlosable. And I type in chat, "lol so troll" because we're it's just it's just unlosable for us and maybe a silly thing to do right there. But gotta have some fun, you know. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. We're killing everything on the map that's up that we can because we have such a lead that they cannot walk up. They kind of are in a bad spot here because they. They basically have to defend this fire giant. They have two phoenixes down. This one's going to get insta-killed when we come back. If they just give up this fire, there's nothing for them to defend besides sit under their titans. So they have to actually walk to this fire. And because they're just playing up, I just hit the Ymir because he's kind of a free kill on the way. Stun the, the Hunbats as he's there, and we win the game. Yo, that is disgusting, Chris. Thank you for the four months, though. I appreciate you. And we're just having fun chasing out Nika to kill him. 
means whatever. <clears throat> Once again, trolling a little bit. Probably could have just ran into the game. But the call is still to end the game. We didn't even do fire, but we just have uh, fire waves pushing in. And people are dead, so why not? Troll it a little bit more by hitting them. Mike threes me away because he's trolling. And we're just, just killing him. Killing the Titan, having some fun. I end up dying to the oboe or something. And we kill the Titan. I actually was going to go Void Shield last item because we had such a lead. And we also have a Mori. Mori transforms into a physical a lot of the time. And then we also have a Nemesis diving. So that Void Shield would have gotten a lot of value because we would have had three physicals diving the back line. So a lot of a lot of AoE shred. And uh, with a lead like that, you can't really go wrong with your build. But I definitely think Void Shield would have been a nice last item. Then once I get my blue stun upgrade and have Void Shield plus Glad Shield on R3, you one shot. So, um, so that was the set. And then in the post game lobby, Neil says good luck in the finals. Say GGs, Kiva said as well because the Warriors are awesome and they're really good peoples. Literally love everybody on that team. And uh, honestly, Warriors were a really good team. That a couple things go their way this set. You know, maybe maybe we could have lost. Maybe they, they would have been the ones in the finals. And I think they would have had a good shot at beating the Kings as well. So they played really well this tournament. They definitely played up um, over how they played in the face. And they were just messing around. Because Mike said, enjoy your break, which sounded BM. And I was I was trolling, telling them that Mike was talking shit in comms. And I said he was two-faced like the Batman villain. And then we're just messing around. But just having a good time because the Warriors are good friends of ours. And uh, yeah, fun team. So yeah, that was the semifinals. Um, tomorrow, we'll be watching the finals and be going over every game from that. And I'll try to give you guys some, some in-depth commentary, talk about my decision-making, talk about things, why I do what I do. Kind of similar what, to what uh, the semifinals were. So hopefully you guys learned a thing or two.